Well, let's talk about more mayhem in the middle of the island. Channel 12 actually covered this, and they did a pretty good job on it. You won't believe this story here. A woman making a church donation in Ronkonkoma was injured when a homeless person tried to steal a car. So we're going to play this. Actually, they did a good job covering it. Well, now to a wild story. A woman being accused of stealing a car and then running over the car's owner in Lake Ronkonkoma. Virginia Huey is at the scene with the latest. Police say the damage to this fence and guardrail were caused by a carjacker who was accused of running over an elderly woman while trying to make a getaway. It happened last night in the parking lot of St. Mary's Church. Lake Police Ronkonkoma. say the victim, 73-year-old Lorraine Lombardo, Island. parked her car near the clothing bins and left her vehicle with the motor running. That's when cops say a homeless woman jumped into the driver's seat of the car. Police say Lombardo right. ran to her car, opened the door, and grabbed the steering wheel. We're told the suspect put the car in reverse, ran over Lombardo's legs, and then crashed the car into a fence and guardrail. Kathleen White heard the crash and called 911. It was a little scary, and the woman on the ground, she was, you know, in her 70s, and I, I heard that she may have broken a femur. Police say the suspect ditched the vehicle and made a run for it, but cops captured her a short time later. Police say the suspect, 50-year-old Doreen Dunbar, is charged with assault and robbery. Lombardo was treated for serious injuries at Stony Brook University Hospital. Police say Dunbar was also taken to the hospital for evaluation, and she'll be arraigned at a later date. In Lake Ronkonkoma, Virginia Huey, News 12, Long Island. So I got to look up to see where that is, but uh, we have another story on it as well. But let's go to Lake Ronkonkoma now. We're going to look. It's all the middle of the island, folks. This is what we get in the middle of the island. So let's see. St. Mary's. It's said right St. Mary's. Lake Shore Road, Lake Ronkonkoma. Was it over here? Okay. Might have been over here. Yep. Oh, there's a food pantry. See, this is what's going on here. So they put all this stuff in the middle of the island, and these homeless people that are dangerous, this is probably where it happened, right around over here. That looks like they're reporting from a different area, though. But I'm thinking it is the same spot. Let's, let's see where they're, they're at. Let's see. St. Mary's Church. Uh, this happened. So it's happened in St. Mary's Church. Uh, that's this is, this is it right here, St. Mary's Church. So this is where it happened right here. Uh, to put in all the problems here. Uh, it's another example of what I'm talking about. So we're gonna look at this. Uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna go to another article here. So let's go to the uh, Daily Voice one, which I'll also read. All right, and uh, see it says woman steals car, runs over the owner. It's savage. In a parking lot in Lake Ronkonkoma Church. A woman has been accused of stealing a car and running over the vehicle's owner in the parking lot of Long Island Church. So this incident happened at 6.45 p.m. Still daylight out Saturday, April 23rd in Lake Ronkonkoma. That is when a 73-year-old St. James woman drove her 2013 Chevrolet Spark into the parking lot of St. Mary's Church located at 315 Lakeshore Drive, parked near clothing bins, and exited the vehicle with the motor running. Doreen Dunbar, age 50, then approached the vehicle, got into the driver's seat, and shut the door. The St. James woman run, ran to the vehicle, opened the driver's door, and grabbed the steering wheel when Dunbar put the car in reverse and accelerated. The door knocked the woman to the ground, and the car ran over her legs. Dunbar continued accelerating, crashed the vehicle into a guardrail on a fence, and then fled the scene on foot. Suffolk County Police 4th Precinct Officers, Aviation Section Officers, and K-9 Section Officers Officers responded to the scene. Dunbar was located a short time later and placed under arrest. The St. James woman was transported to Stony Brook University Hospital for tre uh, of treatment of serious but non-life-threatening injuries. On Dossamile. Just say homeless already. It's a bum. Dunbar, who was police say, another violent, unstable bum on the streets. Dunbar, who police say is on, dom on <laughs> who is a bum. Just, you know what, here, let's just do this. Just because it'll make me feel better. A bum. That's my great handwriting there. I was transported to the same, same hospital for evaluation. Four squad detectives charged Dunbar with first degree assault, second degree robbery. She will be arraigned at first degree court in Central Islip at a later date. And hopefully not released, but you never know. You never, ever know. 
with this. All right, with the bail reform, you would be surprised at who who exactly is let out of jail. All right, because uh, there are a lot of people that are let out of jail uh, that shouldn't be let, let out of jail. All right, let's go back to our. We're at the Daily Voice already, but there's some more stuff in the Daily Voice that we got to look at here. Man busted in stolen vehicle after fleeing from police on Long Island. And this happened in East Massapequa, by the way. They say Massapequa, but it's East Massapequa. So a homeless man. Here we go again. Another bum. Parked in a stolen vehicle. I mean, it's like they're all over the place. A homeless man parked in a stolen vehicle on Long Island was arrested after trying to flee from police. According to Nassau County Police Detectives, officers spotted a stolen vehicle at the intersection of Villa Drive and Derrick Road in Massapequa, East Massapequa. We'll have to cross that again. Hold on. Hold on. Whoops. Let me get this on here. It's not Massapequa. It's East Massapequa. All right? East Massapequa. All right? Which is not Massapequa. You'll see when I go to the map. And this, uh, this, it's literally like uh, a block from Amityville, all right? Villa, uh, v- v- I'm surprised people in Massapequa don't have East Massapequa renamed to West Amityville because it's really got more in common with Amityville than with Massapequa. But anyway, officers spotted a stolen vehicle at the intersection of Village, Village Drive and Derrick Road in East Massapequa at approximately 10.45 a.m. Thursday, April 21st. When approaching the vehicle, police said that the officer spotted... 32-year-old Brandon Jackson in the driver's seat who proceeded to pull away in an aggressive manner. Police said that after seeing Jackson commit several vehicle and traffic violations, officers were able to stop the vehicle and take the driver into custody without incident. No injuries were reported during the incident. Jackson is charged with criminal possession of stolen property, unlawful fleeing of a police officer in a motor vehicle, reckless driving, and multiple vehicle and traffic law violations scheduled to be arraigned. He was arraigned on April 22nd, and we don't know if he was let out. Probably let out. So let's show you where this happened. All right, because, again, they think they say Massapequa, but it's really East Massapequa. A village drive is all the way over here. It's East. Now, Clocks Boulevard is in East Massapequa, and this is known as not a very nice street. We're going to look at Clocks Boulevard right now, all right? All right, you can see it's kind of beat up looking. Some high security gates around. It's, it's, it says Massapequa, but it's really East Massapequa. This section of Massapequa doesn't go to Massapequa schools. It goes to East, uh, it goes to uh, Amityville schools. So it's it, it, it's it's really just Amityville is what it is. This is County Line Road over here, and this is where it happened right here, Villa Villa Place, this area right here. All right. So um, you can see, welcome to Massapequa, but it's actually east of that sign. So this is East Mass Pequa here. All right. So this is the area where it happened in. All right. So this area goes to Amityville schools. All right. It is effectively. Actually, this is Amityville. So you see right here, County Road 1. Literally, it's a block from Amityville. So it's got more in common with. I still think that's East Mass Pequa, even where that sign is. It's still East Mass Pequa. You can see it's a kind of a neglected area, again, because it's not a certain demographic here. So. Uh, even though it's on the South Shore, it's not a certain demographic. It's not Lily White, so uh, it's going to get all the problems, and that's exactly what you have, a homeless guy in a stolen car. Uh, that's that's exactly what you have. Uh, so there are some other things that happened that we didn't really hear too much about on the news at all. Let's go to Laura Uli, because the LIE was shut down today. At exit 33, Lakeville Road reporting police activity now reporting crash involving pursuit if the driver failed to stop by the mall. What mall are they talking about? Perhaps Roosevelt Field. More than 20 police cars are on the scene. Delays are all around. Now pre- reporting all uh, all from the vehicle involved in the chase took off on foot. So we have another thing. We don't even hear about this on the news. We don't know what happened, but it's just another example, another day in the middle of the island. And more bad news for Hillside Avenue. This is in Queens, uh, Jamaica Estates. Shootings, crimes, all kinds of stuff going on there because, again, that area has been redlined. All right. So, and we have another crime that Channel 12 barely covered. Long Island man, 35, shoots teen, wounds himself in a parking lot. The two had become involved in an argument, and he shot the teen, then unintentionally wounded himself. 
A 35-year-old man shot a 16-year-old boy in a parking lot in Quorum on Friday afternoon, broad daylight, 1.25 p.m. Herde Zerdy Hardy was at a strip mall on Middle Country Road and became involved in an argument with the 16-year-old and then shot him before unintentionally shooting himself. The two were taken to area hospitals for treatment of serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Hardy of Medford was charged with assault with intent to cause physical injury, criminal possession of a firearm, second-degree criminal use of a firearm, and criminal possession of a weapon, third-degree criminal possession of a weapon, and criminal possession of a controlled substance. Hardy's court di- case information was not available. The 16-year-old was charged with second-degree criminal possession of a weapon, third-degree criminal possession of a weapon, seventh-degree criminal possession of a weapon, controlled substance, and news to- police did not release the names of the minors charged with the crime. Now, if we look at Channel News 12 here, and we look at Quorum here, Let's see. They barely covered it. Yeah, this is, uh, no, that's something else. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, there you go. It's some, 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 some. Look at this, though. 19 seconds. What a joke, right? What a joke. Uh, and I know the area very well. Corm, it's a bad area over there. Uh, it's a bad, bad area. If you go over here, right here is where it is. It's not the Home Depot. It's east of there. It's this area right here. This area right here, very dangerous. And so the 58 goes by here, and I dread it every time. Uh, you know, you can't win. Go to the Pine Barrens. you got to go through this to get there if you want to ride the 58. Uh, this, this area has been problems for years. It's so bad, even the police left. I mean, it was a police, there was a police precinct here. They ran. It's all closed now. Let's, I'll show you what it looks like. This area is just completely forgotten here. So that was a police precinct. It's closed now. They relocated to Selden. And this, this area is just complete, completely just full of problems. Look at the potholes, too. It's just another example of the neglect you get in the middle of the aisle. We get the criminals. <laughs> there you go. We get the potholes. We get all the problems here, all the neglect. Just well, because. Uh, let's just go because. to the next thing that happened. And, and this happened in the city. Actually, no, we got to go here, too. Hold on. We got more Channel 12 that we got to look at here. Uh, let's see. Do they even have it on the website? Or let me guess. They don't have it on the website. Yes, here we go. Multiple cars ransacked in Manhasset. Car thefts up across Nassau County. So police, Long Island is on edge following a string of car thefts. So let's, just, let's just play the video. You'll see what's going on. Because the North Shore is getting attacked, too. The only safe haven of the South Shore enclaves. Uh, it's, North Shore is getting hit, too. So let's, Frightening uh, scene caught on camera in Manhasset. Take a look at this home security yeah, video. Thugs. You can see Just four men the all wearing masks run up to the driveway of a home on Knickerbocker Road. You can see them actually checking car doors. Well, one of the thieves is actually able to open a door and get inside of a car. Police tonight telling us crooks like these are hitting every town in the county. They say just every 10 town. days I'd ago, I'd like to see a map of where they all hit it, but most of them are not on the south shore. Stolen. Since then, another 26 more have been stolen. Cops say stolen cars have increased 207% from this time 207%. last year. And they are urging residents, come 9 o'clock, lock your doors. And so, a frightening... So, again, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, this is the crime here uh, that we're dealing with here. And I, oddly enough, I don't see anything in here on um, on that in the uh, Nassau County Police uh, updates here. So, I don't know why they don't they don't exactly have that uh but there are some more crimes that they they were reporting so let's report on this <sighs> another one assault six squad detectives report the arrest of a manahaven man for an assault which occurred on thursday april 21st 22 at 304 a.m in manahaven again not the south shore uh, according to detectives Officers responded to a 911 call for loud explosions at the intersection of Kirkwood Boulevard and Manhattan Boulevard. Officers located a male subject who was setting off fireworks. As officers approached the subject, he refused to comply with their verbal commands and attempted to reach into his vehicle. The subject became increasingly agitated and combative as officers attempted to place him into custody. During the struggle, a firework canister fell out of the subject's pocket and police were able to place defendant Argelius Alvariero, 31 of 185 Manahaven Boulevard under arrest. As a result of the defendant violently resisting, an officer su- suffered minor injuries to his right hand, left elbow, and both knees. Defendant Alvariero is charged with assault, second degree, storage of explosive, explosive without licenses, certificates, on lawfully selling fireworks and resisting arrest. He will be arraigned 
on Friday, April 22nd. Uh, and here's the thing. Previously arrested on April 15, 2021, and released without bail for criminal mischief, third degree. Criminal mischief, fourth degree. Assault, third degree. Criminal instruction of breathing and unlawful imprisonment, second degree. So, dangerous man. And he probably is back out of the streets already. So, there you go, folks in Manhattan. This is what you have to deal with. Again, this is Governor Hochul's New York for you. All right. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable. All right. Oh, speaking of bail reform, let's go to this next one here. Suspects walk free after arrest by NYPD's new anti-gun teams. Four men allegedly busted with weapons, including some that were loaded by the NYPD's new anti-gun unit, were allowed to walk free within hours of their arrest thanks to lax judges and bail reform. The NYPD s- said the new neighborhood safety teams made 25 gun arrests in their first three weeks since launching in March, but the Post was only able to obtain court records or information for 12 of those cases. Of those 12, just one man remains behind bars, meaning 11 of the defendants are back on the street, including the four who were cut loose with no bail. The others had posted bail. That was set in their respective cases. Uh, so uh, these are the things. One of the sprung includes Tyrese Bell, 23, who was allegedly nabbed by cops on March 30th in the Bronx after they spotted a 9mm Taurus pistol inside the lower leg of his pants. So this is, these are the kind of criminals that you're going to have running out on the streets. Oh, this is the judge that released him. Well, I guess I guess maybe we should put him in her community and see how he likes it. This is another judge that released uh, another one. So maybe maybe you'd like them in their community. Put these guys in their in their community. All right, see how they like it. See how they like it. I, I'm not going to read the whole article. I have the links below, but. Um, just absolutely just ridiculous. Let's go back to the Nassau County Police one because we got more from this as well. We've got... Ah, see? This is Amityville. See, he was arrested in Amityville. This is correct information. That guy, the homeless guy. All right? All right. Now let's go to robbery in Hempstead. Missing case bureau robbery. Major case bureau robbery occurred on Thursday, April 21st, 1025 p.m. in Hempstead, 7-Eleven on 70, 797 Peninsula Boulevard. Subject approached the store employee, displayed a handgun, and demanded money. He fled the store on foot with an undisclosed amount of U.S. currency. Subject is being described as a male black, six foot tall, with a thin build. There were two employees and no customers present. So, yep, another, another day, another crime. Let's go to the Queen Center Mall now. Pepper spraying forces shoppers to evacuate Queen Center Mall. We're under siege here, and the governor is, like, just completely clueless. Shoppers at Queen Center Mall were forced to evacuate early Saturday morning after an unknown assailant sprayed the crowd with pepper spray. No one was injured, but the mayor area around Macy's and the Elmhurst Mall was forced to temporarily close. The area was fully operational again by 12.35 p.m. No arrests have been made. All right. If you look at 1010, you'll see here they covered the carjacking incident too in Ronkonkoma, uh, Lake Ronkonkoma. Uh, just we're just dealing so much dealing with so much crime right now in this state. Uh, and like I said, this is just this is just some of it. And let's see what the governor's priorities are. Let's go to Kathy Hochul's tw- uh, Twitter and let's see what her priorities now are. Actually, I should open up this incognito window because we all know Twitter is. Let's see. Well, I don't know. she doesn't seem to be talking about the crime at all. Nope. Not at all. So, again, completely clueless while we are dealing with the crime. And that's, again, all part of the plan because almost all the crimes I've read to you have not happened in a lily-white enclave that's full of finance professionals. They're sitting safe. They're sitting safe while we're dealing with most of this crime. All right? Lastly, let's go to Rob Astorino. And I hate to call him out, uh, but... Um, this got on my nerves. Uh, great day campaigning on Long Island today. Massapequa, Cedarhurst, and Babylon. Again, the South Shore. He's on the South Shore. Why isn't he in the middle of the island talking, sh- seeing what we've got to deal with? All the potholes, the the, the violent homeless people out on the streets, the, the, the pothole. I already said the potholes. The, the, the business is closed. Uh, you know, their days are not. But I mean, I agree with what he's saying. Kathy Oak calls to go, but... Again, we need help in the middle of the island. Why are you on the South Shore? 
Uh, a friend of mine told me, oh, that's because that's where the Republican base is. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of people, Rob, that are fed up with the crime going on here and the, the lack uh, of help from the governor, the lack of help from the state. I'm sure there are plenty of people that are fed up that would have loved to have seen you here in Mineola today or Hicksville uh, looking at what we have to deal with, the kind of creeps we have to deal with roaming around our communities, creeps that should be in jail, all right? Uh, and I, I read some of them to you right here. Uh, so I guess that's going to wrap up this video, but yeah. It's a perfect example, and he's probably back out on the streets again. And many of y'all, perhaps, or some other unfortunate community uh, dealing, with, uh, dealing with all these problems, again, while certain demographics, they, they sit pretty in their little enclaves, and we all know it's part of the plan to force us out. We all know how the plan works. You know, uh, you know, we know the middle of the island is is in the crosshairs of this plan, but so is the North Shore. There's just going to be a few safe enclaves left on the South Shore, and you're going to have to fight like hell to live there, and, you know, it's going to be very hard. Everybody is, you know, fighting to get in there. It's very coveted, uh, and uh, it's going to be very hard. And you all know the most likelihood is that if you can't get in there, then you're either stuck in the middle of the island dealing with the problems, or if you want to live somewhere safe, you'll have to go live in New Jersey or somewhere else. Uh, I'm not going to take that for, I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to keep fighting about this. Uh, and we do have an election coming up. We have a primary coming up as well. And Governor Hochul, she must be defeated. Hochul is the worst governor the state has ever seen. Uh, Kathy Hochul uh, is the worst governor we've ever seen. Uh, the bottom line here, this woman right here. Uh, you know, she's talking about electric buses. Great. What about crime? What about the crime crisis we're going on right now? She's, they're just living it. They're in their own little pretend little bubble. They're not dealing with any of this stuff. Well, they're setting all these criminals loose on the our streets. They're sitting pretty. They're sitting pretty in their own little enclaves with their own kind. Uh, we can go to the Twitter page. and see, She's not going to talk about the crime. She's not going to talk about it. I mean, on Facebook. All right. Talking about the environment while the Pine Barrens keep getting destroyed. Right. Not doing a damn thing about that. Uh, you know, you know it, it's just unbelievable. And nothing about the crime. Nothing about the crime crisis that we're dealing with. No, you end. You end. All right? You end. We got to put an end to her. All right? Either in the primary or if Democrats don't, you know, I think Tom Suozzi is a much better candidate. But if they don't, if they want to go for this, then we're going to have to vote Republican. And if we, and if we lose then, well, yeah, you know where I'm going to wind up. You know where that light, that could be the final nail in the coffin, and I'm going to have to go live in New Jersey, and it's going to suck. Uh, but i, I got to live somewhere safe. I can't live my life in fear of crime, and, and that's exactly the way we're doing here on Long Island. On Long Island. If, unless I can get into the enclave, which you know is going to be very hard to do. I'll well, fight like hell, but we all know that we all know what's going to happen. Uh, we all know the plan and how the plan works, uh, and we all know uh, that, uh, you know, People like us, we're not allowed to live in those areas. Uh, it's only for a certain demographic. And if you want to actually be in a safe area that doesn't have swagger walkers and normal people around, well, sorry. You're going to have to go live in New Jersey. Uh, and that's uh, that's what you're going to get with Hochul. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I've gone on long enough, so that's going to wrap up this crime update. It's mostly a crime update, not a rant. But, you know, it's impossible not to rant when you hear about this kind of stuff going on, you know. Uh, I don't want to have to live here. It's hot. Uh, it's far away from family. Um, it's hard to already get around. But I can't. I can't live. I can't be stuck in the ghetto and t being told that. Well, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to live in the places you need to live on Long Island because that's only for a certain kind of people. Uh, you know. I'm not. You know. That's. You know. Of course, I'll fight like hell to live with them. But again, um, we all know it's an uphill battle. But I will fight like hell to live with them. Uh, you know, I will. So um, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.